Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Uh, what we do on this channel is we review uh, auction listings on Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids or other online sources, and uh, specifically for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers, and and go through the the listings, the photos, the videos, um, see if there's anything out of place, uh, and otherwise just help point out issues that come up on these, uh, so you can make a better decision if you're in the market for one of these, whether it's you know the one on Bring a Trailer or whatnot, uh, or if you're just looking elsewhere. So let's get into the vehicle that we're going to study today, which is a a beautiful looking uh, 1994 Land Cruiser. This is a, an FZJ80. Uh, so this is the yeah the second year of the uh, the yeah, the F the one FZ FE motor here in the United States. And yeah, this one looks looks great. Uh, so let's go through the the high level details and see what we can find out. Uh, so this vehicle was acquired by the seller in April of 2022. So just over a year and subs and was subsequently refurbished uh, so it looks like this you know person bought it and put quite a bit of work into it uh, so it's got old man emu suspension it was repainted uh, was the engine was rebuilt it's got corbo front bucket seats you know you can go through the rest of the details um, and we'll kind of touch them touch on those as we go through the video but everything else seems pretty normal i do notice that it uh, doesn't have the roof rack which is a yeah nice look and um, let's see, anything else? It's got, yeah, let's look here at the details on the right. So it's located in Los Angeles, California. Uh, it's got a clean California title in the seller's name. And uh, let's see, uh, it's got 171,000 miles. So yeah, low, low mileage vehicle. And yeah, it's got the, the right combination of the lift and the, and the BF Goodrich KO2 tires. Uh, let's see, so yeah, it was refinished in Oregon in July. The bumpers were repainted and it looks like the windshield, weather stripping, and fender flare seals, wiper arms, and body clips were said to have been replaced at the time of the repaint. So a repaint done right, and it looks like there's a, uh, uh, some scratches in the rear window tint. Um, yeah, let's see. It looks like the power steering pump, front brake rotors, and wheel bearings were replaced in 2020. You know, very typical and common things for, yeah, this, this mileage and age. Um, all right, let's see. The, the wood trim, air conditioning, compressor, and receiver dryer are said to have been replaced under the current ownership and wear is visible on the driver's door panel. I think there's a crack on at the top. Uh, and let's see, the tachometer bounces occasionally uh, and the D indicator light functions intermittently. So we'll, we'll talk about those. Uh, there's a list of things dealing with the, uh, the engine rebuild. So yeah, take a look at that. But yeah, good, good sign that that engine was rebuilt. That's a big value adder. And, you know, it looks like the Burfield joints and transfer case output seals were replaced. So looks like a lot of work was done to get this ready for sale and put it in, you know, kind of top shelf condition. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the Carfax, see if there's anything, you know, curious there. Uh, so nine owners, which is a lot <laughs> for a vehicle. Uh, let's see where it's lived its life. Uh, most recently in California, but it looks like, yeah, from the beginning, it's it's been in California. Uh, so let's go through these. We're just going to check the mileage, make sure there's nothing out of place. Kind of take a peek at the, um, you know, the service notes that are done here. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. It stayed in the Bay Area through, you know, through these owners. And yeah, so no mileage inconsistencies, no accidents, no damage noted. Um, kind of light on the maintenance history. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure, you know, to get to this point, it's, it's been, you know, pretty well maintained. All right, so there's a couple videos in here. Check those out, uh, you know, and then <laughs> there's also another video on YouTube. I'll link it in the description, uh, but we'll we'll talk about it when we get into the price uh, price discussion at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the photos, wherever those are. Scroll, 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 and here we are. All right, so just keep in mind this thing's been repainted. Um, you know, so I it. From all intents and purposes, it looks like a yeah pretty good quality repaint. Uh, you know, at least it's evidenced by the notes. Uh, you know, where you know a lot of the you know the seals and the gaskets were replaced instead of just being painted over. Um, yep, and there's uh, I believe in the uh, in the photos we'll see there's uh, what do you call them uh, pre conditioned photos, which is always a nice touch. All right, so looking at you know gaps in the body panels, things uh, you know being misaligned, everything looks. Yeah, pretty straight, at least from these photos. Uh, yeah, that medium red pearl, that's a that's a great color. So, yep, so nice uh, nice clean roof without that roof rack. Looks like the antenna has been deleted. The, there's some sort of cap. I'm not I'm not sure who makes those, uh, but yeah, that's kind of a nice touch. And those, and I don't know, those antennas, you know, they can kind of be finicky. They can kind of, you know, break and not retract, but uh, you know, that's a, kind of a clean look. 
And then, yeah, I, I love the new, you know, the look of the new Fender Flare uh, seals in there. It looks good. Yeah, body seems pretty straight and clean. Yep, good looking color. Yeah, looking on these um, these Fender Flares, uh, seeing this little indentation, it looks like maybe this thing had original uh, running boards, and I think that the the seller so much as says that in the in the other YouTube video I'll talk about. Uh, not quite sure what this is here on the top part of the glass, uh, and it's hard to tell because there's you know the photo it's so bright here, but yeah, it looks like a little corrosion on that rear hitch. But yeah, that's a that's a good looking truck. It's the right look with those with those tires. I you know I know there's other uh, there's other tires that get the job done as well. But yeah, those are those are my favorite. And yeah, just really looking the yeah the or really liking the look on the on the roof. All right, not seeing anything jump out at me. Um, you know, again, because it's all been repainted, it's more of a, uh, you know, it's trying and recently repainted. It looks like, you know, more of like, let's find something wrong. Uh, seeing just a little like maybe overspray on this, on the screw. It's kind of weird to see that. You think those would have been removed and, and maybe they were, you know, these, this uh, uh, light here at the bottom, you know, the kind of turn indicator. Uh, and it could just be the finish on the screw, like who knows, but kind of looks like it got a little overspray. Uh, it's the the gold package. Some of these ended up with silver in here, but some of them had had gold in there. I remember my uh, yeah, my dad had a '93 Camry that had that that gold package. Uh, we've seen this. It's very common on these. There's you know it, the the alignment of this valence panel. You can see it's nice and tight here with the grill and the headlight housing. Whereas you move to the driver's side, it kind of sags down. I I don't know if it's like a um, something that happens. You know, assuming this was all disassembled, so maybe. Uh, you know, maybe it's been, you know, tweaked or torqued in some way, but yeah, that seems to be a very common thing that we're, that we're seeing on these little, uh, chip out of the front bumper. It looks like, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, nice and clean. The reflections nice and, uh, nice and consistent going down the body. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, I'm not sure what that would be for. Uh, you know, some sort of like antenna, perhaps for um, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a cell. You know, I think some of these, you know, might have had like a, you know, a cell phone. You know, in the vehicle. A little. There's. I mean, there's obviously a little. You know, lens issue here, but you know, perhaps that masking line wasn't. You know, put on quite right. And super minor. And yeah, I mean, pretty notable corrosion on the on the back hitch. Um, I I don't know just by looking at. It, I don't think this is a, a Toyota installed hitch. It looks like an aftermarket one, uh, but yeah, again, not a big deal. Easy to, easy to, easy to touch that up and get that matching the rest of the truck. Uh, seeing a little bit of overspray here, um, you know, just a, a masking issue. And, you know, that's worth being said because these little vent panels, like they're impossible to get off without breaking them. So like, I understand <laughs> totally masking around those. Let me make sure I'm zoomed out. Yeah, and you can you can see it's a little little wavy through there. Again, very very common and, and a normal issue for yeah repainting. All right, moving here to the driver side mirror. Yeah, looks looks nice and clean. Just a little more, you know, kind of like masking issues. It's interesting. I thought the listing indicated that the glass was replaced and all this stuff was done. Uh, maybe that was done at a different time. Uh, but so obviously it was done at a different time because you wouldn't have these, yeah, you know, these masking issues if the glass were, were out of there. And there's the scratch and some more kind of overspray and masking there on that rubber trim on the rear hatch. All right. Looking at the tires and wheels. Yeah. Tires look, you know, good and new. Um, yeah, little little corrosion on the on the wheels. Kind of surprisingly for California, um, yeah, I wonder you know exactly you know where it was if it was close to yeah sea breeze and ocean spray and whatever. All right, little damage on the on the door here on this on this edge. Uh, you can see a little bit of a crack there on the top edge, and then you know, maybe we can get a better photo up here. But otherwise, yeah, looks looks pretty clean. 
and there's the damage that we see on the edge and there at the top. And yeah, it looks like some scuffs and scratches in the leather. It's hard hard to tell what's going on here. Uh, very normal for yeah the the wood trim to kind of you know delaminate and um, you know and kind of fade. This looks like it's in okay shape, and then you can see that rippling there at the front of the door card. Another little cut or separation there. Yeah, I don't. It's funny how these all kind of like tuck out. Uh, on, in this photo here, what you'd want to pay attention to, you know, it's along these bottom edges that the doors can rest. Given what we saw, um, you know, on the rear hitch and the wheels, like, I don't know, especially given in California, it's not a concern, but this is a good spot, you know, look at these weep holes. So this, this hole exists so that if water does get behind, uh, it can, it can drain out, but yeah, you can, you can end up with, you know, corrosion along the bottom edge of the door as we've seen on, uh, some other vehicles. Um, see a little you know oxidation damage here on the steering wheel also on the back side of this handle it's very common for those to kind of you know all that sun fade to kind of be concentrated right there so you can you can see that having happened so this thing was obviously parked outside yeah, hence why it was repainted likely um looks like it was a doors on repaint uh, we saw evidence of that in um you know obviously in the photos a little bit later but on the uh, if you look if you remember the photo of the the gas cap and in, in that door uh, you can tell that was, you know, it hadn't been painted underneath and you can also see, you know, this wasn't painted. It's far too dirty based on when the repaint was. I'm um, going to these Corbo seats. Uh, they're, they're a pretty nice touch. This is what was in, um, the 197 that I owned, uh, looks like they're unit the, using the planted seat brackets. These seats are pretty nice. However, I don't think they've got a, uh, like an adjustable recline. It's, they're kind of like Jeep seats. So it's either this angle or. And I could be wrong, and maybe maybe I am, but at least the model of Corbo seats that I had, uh, yeah, like this is the set angle. You can't go further back. You can't go forward. forward. You're kind of like stuck at this angle. Nice clean carpet. I'll say it over and over again. I I just love this like 93, 94 uh, cut on the on the carpet. Looks like that needs to be tucked in there uh, under the center console, but otherwise, yeah, looks looks good. Nice clean carpet. It's good to see this little cover miss or there in place. It's usually missing. Uh, looks like a little damage was repaired here on the on the bottom left on the outside uh, the driver door. Um, yeah, and you can you can see the the sun damage there. It's good to see though that the dash isn't cracked. Um, you know, especially given the cracking here at the top of the steering wheel. These poverty packs. Uh, well, I guess technically this isn't a poverty pack. So this is a little surprising to see. Let me look at the center console. Yeah, this is interesting. Huh. So the when when you had a, a cloth interior, you would have had, you know, cloth and manual front seats, you would have, you know, cloth rear seats. You get this cut out or this lowered console without like a leather topper. So this is a, a a mismatch for the leather to be here, but not to get the leather topped console. Similarly, looking at the steering wheel, um, the steering wheel, given that it's a leather interior, this thing should have been uh, a leather trimmed steering wheel. So, so that's a little off. And then same thing with the shift leather, shift lever. Um, it should also be covered in leather based on um, the door cards. So something's been, I, I would presume something's been tweaked, whether it's, this was like originally a cloth interior truck, um, meaning that the steering wheel, the shifter handle and the console were all original, but the door cards and the seats have been changed or, you know, the vice, you know, the, the inverse could be true. Uh, meaning that the, the steering wheel, the shifter, you know, handle and the console were, were swapped. Um, I haven't yet seen like an original one where it's like mixed like this. I'm sure it's possible, but, um, yeah, just something that kind of catches my attention. Looks like an aftermarket stereo. These, um, these pioneer ones, like the kind of this age, they're, they're actually pretty decent. Um, you know, they've got some, you know, decent physical buttons. I like having the knob, you know, instead of, you know, like a touch screen and all that. Uh, it looks like some screws, you know, maybe a, a brake trailer controller or something's been screwed into the, uh, into the lower dash there. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's also, uh, yeah, yeah, nothing to, nothing to say there.
I was, I was going to say, so yeah, when I detail, ve- detail a vehicle, yeah, I use like a toothpick and I uh, pick out the old like den- dead skin and grime that gets in the in the letters of the press here. Uh, yeah, obviously not that level of detail was given uh, in this case. Same thing, you know, like you got to clean up, see around the screw hole here and down there. Like it just shows that this vehicle, you know, yeah, it's it was a little gross, let's let's say. And, and you can kind of get glimpses of it, you know, here in like the nooks and crannies where the detail didn't go deep enough. Uh, anyway, that's really gross to see. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really clean besides that. Floor mats look good. Carpet looks good. Yeah, not much too too much to say here on the uh, on the passenger door. Uh, moving to the rear uh, driver's side door, yeah, looks looks fine. Yeah, so I had I had yeah, looking at the front doors, um, it, these look like the original housings. They they maybe they feel a little dark, perhaps, um, but seeing here at the rear. And maybe they just replace the speakers in the rear doors. That maybe that's what I'm what I'm seeing. So yeah, it looks like rear rear speakers were done. The originals uh, might still be in place in the front, or at least they tucked a smaller speaker there in the front. There is a possibility. Um, some of the early, yeah. I, I've mostly seen it on 93s, but some 93s, maybe even some 94s had uh, a full leather setup like you're seeing here, but had manual seats. And that might be the combination. So perhaps these front seats were, uh, obviously these are Corbeau, but um, originally they were, you know, like manual leather covered seats and that, that would get the, uh, the center console and the steering wheel to all match up. So that's probably how this was uh, fitted originally. But yeah, good good match between the uh, you know like the vinyl on this uh, Corbeau versus the leather on the back and the door cards. It, yeah, it looks looks good. Uh, some scratches from you know likely this is from the seat belt. Um, you know, getting getting stuck in the door and it looks like some wear on this outer edge. But again, I don't think this portion of the car was repainted. Good to see that driver visor still sticking up, and then you can also see the sunroof trim is all in place. Uh, little, little dirty. Looks like a little grimy. Yeah, you know, and that continues. You can see smudges kind of all over the place. Tough to get that out without you know putting a, a light cloth to all of it. Just more marks on that passenger side sun visor. So it's not, yeah. This, this is also a little, I'm not sure why this is all kind of like buckled and wavy. It shouldn't be that way. Looks like also this, uh, <clears throat> the screen here over the, the sunroof uh, has spent a lot of time being retracted. Uh, yeah, missing the covers for the bolt holes on the second row, grab handles. All right, and moving to the rear here to the rear hatch. Yeah, so that must have been an antenna for a, a yeah, cell phone or like the old school cell phone. It looks like whatever they did to get this out, they just ripped it out and then realized that it was yeah, put through the through the glass. And yeah, you can see all the scratches and something funky going on with the rear tint on the rear hatch. It yeah, it's in really good shape. It's it's pretty clean. This is going to be, you know, a pretty good buy for somebody especially given the mileage 171. So yeah, everything, you know, as far as usage looks pretty consistent with a, you know, pretty well, well used 171,000 miles. All right. Moving to the engine bay. Uh, it looks like the valve cover has been off and painted. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that this is so, there's so much contrast here. It's hard to, hard to tell what's going on in these photos. That's, that's a little better. 
but yeah, the 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 highs they're too bright, the lows are too dark. You really can't see what's going on here. Looks like a newer radiator. Um, not seeing any like oil leaks is obviously a good sign, but yeah, it's evidenced of the rebuild um, that's been done on this vehicle. So that's yeah, it's good to see. Uh, looks like new hoses throughout. Yeah, nice, nice touch. Yeah, so there was a comment in um, in the listing about the the what do you call it the tachometer and the D light being inconsistent. Um, I believe some of those wires are you know or what come down here past the EGR. Um, seeing that the engine's been replaced or you know it's been rebuilt, you know removed, whatever. Um, you know, hopefully that wiring harness isn't in contact and wasn't damaged, but yeah, I wouldn't rule that out given those, those symptoms, but it could also just be, you know, the, the instrument cluster going bad. It's just got a little bit more like corrosion than I would expect for Southern California, seeing this power steering cooler, you know, kind of being, you know, a little, little gross and you know, this like mounting bolt having a little rust on it again. It's, it's fine. It's, it's really not bad. I mean, it's great, <laughs> really. Just, it's surprisingly worse than what I would expect. But yeah, those burr fields look good. So looking at the back side of the front differential, uh, continues to be clean. No, looks like everything's, you know, dry under here. Um, you know, even going back, you know, looking at the transmission, uh, that all looks looks dry and nice. Yep, still, still dry as we work our way back. Um, you know, the, the, these bolts for this, uh, cross member, you know, those have obviously been turned, uh, you know, again, further evidencing a full, you know, full re rebuild on this thing. They probably, um, yeah, pulled the, um, yeah, the engine and the transmission out together. A uh, little overspray on the catalytic converters. Yeah. Probably not a big deal. Um, <laughs> it's a good identifier if they ever get cut out, you know, and stolen by somebody. I'm guessing this is kind of like dirt and dust. So it looks like this has been used a little bit, which is yeah, great, to, great to see. Suspension seems really new. Um, you know, not seeing a bunch of rock chips on it. As we're going through these photos, I'm also, you know, taking a peek at the, you know, these pinch welds. Um, yeah, it's, they've all been, they've all been great. Nothing to comment there. And the rear looks good. Uh, yeah, spare tires upside down. Um, but you can you can see this is like an abnormal amount of corrosion, um, you know, for down here. And then it looks like this thing has been off road just a little bit. You can see a little bit of rash on the bottom of the hitch, and you can see these you know tangs uh, being being bent a little bit. And yeah, this rear kind of silencer is a little little crusty. Uh, look at the stickers, toolkit. Some documentation. There's some receipts for different different work that's been done. You can see what they painted, all the work. So it's good to see an itemized list here. Uh, yeah, that's 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 nice. And then yeah, there's the receipt for all the work done on the engine. Did they do a rear main seal? They did, or at least there was a part for it. <laughs> So yeah, that's a good sign. All right, so here's the the pre work or the yeah the pre condition photos. It's good to see kind of what damage was there, where where you know bonder and bondo and filler was used. Yeah, it looks like a pretty pretty clean, pretty straight body. There's a part of me that wished they would have uh, yeah closed up these these uh, fender hole or fender flare holes, but you know you can't get it. You can't get everything. Yeah, looks looks pretty well done. You can again see, you know, doors on paint. You know, different they're separate prep for all the, the body pieces. That's what you want to see. It's a good, you know, good look. Yeah, so there you go. There's all the photos. Um all right. So yeah, this has got five days left at twenty one thousand dollars. You know, given the mileage, given the repaint, you know, relatively clean interior, you know, there's a little, you know fingerprints and stuff kind of all over, but 
you know, still still clean. This is definitely one of the better ones we've seen. Yeah, this could go pretty high. I I I don't I don't I wish it wouldn't, but um yeah, this this could go over 30 grand. Um so on that on that point, this vehicle was for sale in the I Hate Mud forums before it hit bring a trailer. Um, you know, the seller didn't get what they're asking. I, I couldn't remember to be honest what it was that they were asking for. Um this v- vehicle was featured on um uh, another YouTube channel it's kind of specific to Land Cruisers. I'll put a link in the description. And in that video, you know, there's a good walkthrough. There's an interview with the seller. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend if you're interested in buying this vehicle, check that out. Follow the link in my description. Um, but in the comments, if you look down there, you know, one of the rules for bring a trailer is to, you know, not be advertising it elsewhere. And, you know, so in the, in the comments there, the original, uh, you know, the guy that, you know, posted the video, um, did respond to a comment to somebody asking how much, and that price was 32,900. So I would assume that the reserve's going to be roughly around like 30 grand. Um, depending on what kind of deal the person got when they bought this in April, 2022, yeah, they, they could be, you know, still making some pretty good money on it. So, um, yeah, so my, my guess is, you know, bids, are going to go above that, uh, bring a trailer is going to bring the seller some additional value. And this is probably going to go up to, you know, like 35 grand. Um, again, that's insane for, again, what, what I think it's worth, but you know, people are going to pay it. It looks, looks nice. It's good for Instagram. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so let's, let's put a final value. Let's, you know, again, this is more just a, a wag here, but yeah, let's say, you know, 33,500. Um, that's what it'll go to and it'll sell at that price. So, Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Um, let me know if I'm off, if I miss something. Uh, do you find the little like, you know, dirt in the, the bolt holes in the center console gross? Yeah, that grosses me out. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. See ya.